People get married for all sorts of reasons. <laughs> for fame, for fortune, for security, for companionship, for sex, and for money. And for all the reasons to get married, love is considered the ideal. Love can make you feel like you can do anything. And while you definitely should get married for love, I propose that you should also get married for the love of food. It's like really good car insurance. You might need it. Because there's going to come a day where you don't feel like honey bunnying up with your sugar plum. But you got to eat every day. This is my husband. We got married on April 13th this year after dating for two years. And I found out very early that he was a chef, and he found out very early that I was not a salad-eating chick. <laughs> you know these women. They order diet waters and side salad. They push lettuce around on the plate and fake being full. That's not me. I eat. <laughs> so on our first date, we went to Claim Jumper, and you know that they give you three servings of food. I finished a salad, a whole entire sandwich, a stack of fries, and we split dessert. He put a toothpick in his mouth and said, I'm impressed. <laughs> this is how we do birthdays. We make pasta at the Chio. We did sushi at SN Asia, carrot cake at Liberty Market, and then we went to the movies and had popcorn, red hearts, and a Diet Coke. <laughs> There's a blogger who has this term, fudatio, and it's all about, <laughs> baby, let me tell you, we practice a lot of fudatio in my house. <laughs> Woo! My husband made this salad. It's got lobster, crab, mango, and a homemade raspberry vinaigrette dressing. This is asparagus and shrimp from the same meal, and that pasta has peppers and sausage like mixed inside of it. And I will never forget that night, but because between the fourth and fifth course, he got on his knees and he asked me to marry him. And that's the thing about cooking for or with the person that you love. You create these experiences and these opportunities that don't happen in a restaurant. If you want to know whether or not you are compatible with someone, cook in a kitchen with them. Because it is going to take the same three things to have a very good relationship. <laughs> the strangest thing happens when you turn off the TV and you get in the kitchen together. You talk. You talk about your day. He talks about his day. Your kids will talk to you. And that does not happen in the drive through at McDonald's. Let's talk compromise. This is our Thanksgiving turkey. Mike's idea of seasoning a turkey includes fresh herbs and fruit. Mine includes every form of salt known to man. <laughs> compromise. And then you have creativity. These are cake pops. And basically, it's cake and frosting on a stick. And I love them. There's a website called Bakerella which makes this look very easy which is why the first time that Mike came over to my house with his three beautiful kids, I thought this is a great way for us to bond and you know, have this moment and let them express themselves creatively because it's easy, right? Child, we made a mess. <laughs> there was frosting everywhere. I burned my hand with hot chocolate. And Tiffany in this picture, she's four, but she was singing, Sprinkle, sprinkle, diva, while she sprinkled all the cake pops. We had an amazing time, and we did bond, and we did talk, and we did get to know each other, and we did have an experience. And that is something that happens when you cook with or for the person that you love. And I will tell you, that does not happen in a drive through So tomorrow, I want you to bake a cake for your wife or I want you to fry chicken for your husband, or I want you to teach your children how to make homemade cornbread. Because Whitney Houston said it best, how will I know if he really loves me? If we can cook together in this kitchen. Because marrying for love is ideal, but marrying for the love of food is like really good car insurance. <laughs>